today you join me down at Linear Fisheries and I'm on Bray's Nose 2 in particular and for anyone that's fished it before in the past will know it is full of big fish. There's fish up in over the 50 pound mark in quite a number of 40s and I think over a third of the stock are 30 pounders with the majority being 20s so there's plenty of big fish in here to go at and let me tell you they are definitely in the area that I'm in. I've been watching them for the last sort of 20 minutes, half an hour. You might just see them over the back of me. So I'm porpoising out. Um, I've got all three rods out. As you can imagine, I was pretty eager to get all three rods out, um, out on their spots. And I've got two out, only 14 wraps. Like I say, the fish are in pretty close. So I didn't want to go too far out. And I found quite a nice clean area, about 14 and a half wraps out. So I've got two rods on that over a bit of bait. And then I've got my left hand rod, I've put on a solid bag and I'm just gonna row that around sort of every 20 minutes, half an hour, see if I can pick up a fish. And if uh, the solid bag doesn't pay off, as you can probably see behind me, the sun is out and it's quite a warm day. So I won't be uh, waiting too long to go over the zigs if nothing happens on those solid bags. Keep your eyes peeled throughout the vlog as well because we are running a giveaway for one lucky winner to win one of our Black Widow low level free rod pods. But without further ado, I'm going to get a little bit more bait out there on the spot. I only started off with two or three spawns and then got everything else set up. Um, but I'm going to carry on and put enough of three or four spawns out and uh, see how we go from there. So here's the bait that I'm going to be putting in over the top. I've got Pacific Tuna Boilies in there that I've had soaking in the, the Pacific Tuna Booster Mix for the last three or four weeks. Some sweet corn, chilli hemp and also uh, a few pellets in there as well. That's, I'm not going to be putting all that out over the course of the session unless it really does kick off. I'm going to start off um, with six to seven spawns, see how that goes. And if anything, if we do get into the fish, then I'll be topping up as the session goes. But I, I'm definitely not going to be going too gun ho with the bait to start with. Just finished putting a few spawns of bait out over that spot and let me tell you it's so warm today the sun is so bright it's a complete contrast to what the weather's been like over the last few weeks we're mid-october now and we've already had a few frosts our first few frosts of the winter and it's, it's been pretty cold over the last couple of weeks the conditions completely contrasted to this and uh, when i was speaking to the bailiff earlier he said it has been hard fishing over the last couple of weeks the fish have sort of switched themselves off um, but I'm hoping this change in weather, a new southwesterly wind as well. I mean, it's going to be cock on for it. If it, it continues like this going into the evening, going into the night where it's going to be mild again, I think there could be a few fish on the cards. But there's fish still crashing about just, still, you know, about 30, 40 yards from the bank. So I'm feeling very, very confident as we go into this session. But let me just switch you around and show you exactly what I'm using today. So with me, I've got the Bazier X45 X rods and they're the 12 foot, three and a quarter pound test curve. And pretty much, you can just see the fish just there. And pretty much they are predominantly the rods that I use um, on my 12 foot setup. I'll just give you a bit of a closer look. So there they are, I've got the Alps ARD reel seat, really nicely finished off. See guide TDG guides. They look absolutely glorious. There's so much fish activity in this corner. We've got fish crashing to the left and to the right. And I've paired them up with the Bazier, Tournament Bazier 45 SCW QD reels. I've got on them today 15 pound line, 15 pound mono, and that's straight through because there is quite a bit of weed present as I was doing a bit of lead work early and trying to find some clear areas. So it was pr pretty obvious that there was a lot of weed present. So. I want something, if I do hook one, I need that, that 15 pound mono to really help me sort of prise those fish out of the weed and make sure that we land them safely. But so much activity, hopefully it's not long before we get into a few fish. Well, I'm just gonna change over to a zig, a five foot zig. The solid bag has done absolutely nothing, so it's worth a shot on the zig. I'm gonna chop and change the depth over the next few hours of a rough, e rough estimate, it's about seven or eight foot of water from feeling the lead down out there. So I think start at five and then sort of work our way down. Well, quite an uneventful afternoon after what I consider quite a promising start, seeing all those fish in the peg early on, in close, I was expecting to have two or three on the bank within a couple of hours, but it sort of goes along with what the bailiff was telling me. They've been seeing the fish and you can get on the fish, but they've just been hard to catch and not much has been coming out of the lake for the last couple of weeks. So 
I'm hoping with this change of weather over the next couple of days, we might be into some fish. I'm here till tomorrow sort of afternoon. So it's quite promising, especially with these weather conditions. It's meant to be a lot milder than it has been overnight. That might sort of bring them on the feed a bit. But I did start chopping and changing with the solid bags, roving them about. Then I went to the zigs in uh, sort of water in the depth every 20, 30 minutes. And I just couldn't buy a bite. It was, it was really strange, really, really strange. There's definitely fish here. They started to push out into sort of the middle of the lake at the moment. There are a few in close still. And I've decided to put all three out over the bait that I've been putting out. Still at 14 and a half wraps. I'm pretty comfortable with that area it's nice and clean only bring about the odd bit of weed because i'm just fishing beyond the weed bed and i've put a few more spawns of bait out just enough if a if a group of fish do come across it that it's going to take them a little while to get through it hopefully I have a few on the bank and then i can top it up um, and hopefully we can get string a few bites together but for now it's time to sort out the bivvy ready for the night ahead and then get some food on for dinner i think and hopefully one of those rods is going to rip off during the night. Well, there we go. Definitely an upper 20, maybe in a 30 pounder. There's been fish crashing on me all evening and one of the rods has finally ripped off come on well there we go how about that 31 pound four ounce of braised nose two mirror cup i've had fish crashing over me all night it's come up to about half two in the morning and my middle rods ripped off <laughs> to be honest i did think that it wasn't going to happen the amount of fish that was on me is just silly I thought we were bound to get a few bites and then my sort of confidence got a bit knocked knowing that there was fish on me and nothing was happening and finally just as I got back got to sleep it ripped off but what an absolute unit that is come on right let's show you the other side and we'll get a few pictures and there's the other side look at that what a unit <laughs> Get in. Well, good morning. As you see, I've got a few visitors to the swim this morning and it was very very misty last night it was it was just ridiculously misty after catching that 31 pound mirror trying to get the rods back on the spot you couldn't see any of the, the my my markers on the back far margin it was like just cast into a big fog cloud and it was sort of guessing really sort of where on sort of muscle memory where the spot was thankfully i managed to get two both rods out with a decent enough drop that i was happy with and looking at the line where it's going this morning towards the far marker, it looks like it's pretty spot on. I am going to redo all three and get a bit more bait out in the next sort of 20 minutes or so. But yeah, what a result last night, a £31 4 ounce mirror. I, like I said, um, I was starting to lose a bit of confidence, a little, little bit of hope that something was going to happen because there was fish crashing all over me all of yesterday afternoon, all of the evening and uh, whatever I was sort of trying, nothing was really paying off. But sticking to the guns, putting some bait out, getting all three rods over the top, and uh, it paid off. So show you the lake, let's just switch you around. And there we go. The mist is slowly starting to clear now. I can see the back horizon markers. So that's why I'm gonna get all three rods redone just to make sure they are in the right area. I didn't get much sleep after that fish I have to I think by the time I was back in the bag it was sort of half free it's actually quite a quite a chilly morning it's quite a mild night but where this fog's come in it really dropped down around sort of half five six o'clock hopefully that sun comes in burns off the fog and a little bit of wind comes on the lake I think that's got what we're sort of hoping for right let's get some bait out
Well, before I had the first brew of the morning, I should tell a lie, I had a brew this morning about 3.30 a.m. after that fish, but the first brew since it's been light. I wanna run through some of the effort fishing that I've been up to since my last vlog. Um, so the first trip that I had since then was uh, Digger Lakes at the back end of summer, our last real hot weather that we had. Um, and the idea was exactly the same, to try and stalk some carp using worms um, and just follow them around the lake. And this is how I got on. I'm back down on Snell's Lake, down on the Digger Lakes complex down in Devon. And I've got the whole day ahead of me, as opposed to in last month's vlogs where I had a few hours to try and nick a bite. Today, I've got the whole day at my disposal and I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be enough a beautiful day like it was last time. And we've had a lot of sun over the last few weeks. So I'm expecting it to be just as weedy, if not even weedier than it was last time I visited the lake. And my plan is to keep the kit on the barrow, try and locate groups of fish and do a bit of free lining. I want to try and catch one doing a bit of free lining once again, try and get them to take that bait just as a bit of reaction as it's fluttering down just in front of their faces. And hopefully we can go home catching enough of Snell's Lake Cup. Wow, look at that, it looks absolutely prime today. Conditions are spot on for a bit of stalking. There's no one else on the lake until about midday, so, and then it's only a couple of anglers. So there's gonna be plenty of opportunities, I think, around the lake where the carp are gonna be sitting, just basking in the sun, like there was last time. It's just whether they're gonna be willing to take the bait. I don't know if you can see or pick this up on camera, but there's one just cruising there. I've just spotted a couple beyond it in the weed bed over there. I think this might be a chance. It's just coming in close here. I'm going to put the waders up on, get the kit sorted out. And I think I'm going to wade out there because I can see a couple of fish out there just sat in a weed bed. I think this could be the first opportunity of the day. But unfortunately, that first spot, I managed to wade all the way out to the fish, and there was one that was, it was an upper 20, and uh, it just sat itself, nestled its head straight into the weed, so I just couldn't get a bait on it, and I was waiting there, I must have waited about half an hour. Um, had a few attempts at a few fish that were just sort of cruising in and out, but they weren't interested, but I sat waiting 30 minutes just to get an opportunity at that like mid 20 sort of to upper 20 uh, mirror but unfortunately he didn't move so what i've done i've just left the swim nice and quietly i think i'll keep that one sort of in the back of my mind for maybe in an hour's time go back because i do like to hang out around there so i think that's definitely worth a shout later on in the day but for now i'm going to take a wonder and i'm going to head straight back down to that bay where i hooked the one on the last vlog because i think they're going to be up there now the sun's been up a fair while they weren't in there earlier but i reckon there could be a few fish making their way in and we're stopping every swim on the way and see if there might be an opportunity but i'll just show you the lake there it is through the trees you can see how much weed is actually in the lake I mean, I think the best way of approaching it is exactly what I'm doing, wading out to the fish, where it's shallow enough to do so. And it is gorgeous today. Absolutely stunning. Yes. He took it. We got him. I knew the patience would pay off. We've been here for about <clears throat> 15, 20 minutes after that exact fish. It's just been coming in, swirling. Oh, come on, out of the weed bed. Oh, 
He didn't know what happened. I just fluttered the worm, took the sweet corn off just and left the worm on. So I was wondering if he was just spooking off of that bit of yellow and first pass with just the worm and he's absolutely nailed it. Just got away the fault. There he is. Try and get the rod up. Oh, get the net. Yes. Come on. Come on. That's a right result. Well, there we go. I was putting the bait in front of this one for the last sort of 20, 25 minutes. And I started off with uh, a worm topped with a bit of sweet corn. Pretty much what I ended on on my last trip, which, which did that 25 pounder. But this one wasn't having a bit of it. Every time I put that in front of him, it was just sort of spooking off of it or, or swimming away. So I decided the next run through that he came through, I'd take off a bit of corn and see if he just wanted the worm on its own. And first time he spotted it, he absolutely nailed it. Mid double, I'd say, maybe just pushing sort of upper double. He might even be a scraper 20, but lovely fish all the same. That was a bit of a result. I'd just come round to the weedy bay in which I had the 25 pounder on my last trip. Sat down, thought to myself, I'm just gonna have some lunch, watch the water, see if I could see any signs of fish. Cause there wasn't anything that sort of immediately jumped out of me when I first got into the peg. And about halfway through my sandwiches, just in the clear area, just there over my shoulder, I saw a couple of fish come in. They were sort of about mid water and then a few bubbles come up. So they were feeding on the bottom. I was like, oh, do I do I set up one of the rods, get a rig out there and just, you know, sort of have one rod on the deck, a bit of bait around it. But then I saw one of them just slowly start to sun itself just under the set of lily pads just out there. And it was about there for five minutes. I thought, now nah, I'm going to get the waders on, get the free lining gear and uh, go out with some worm and some corn. And about 30 minutes later, after changing from a worm with a tip with a bit of corn, just to just a bare worm on the hook and it absolutely nailed it on its first pass through. So couldn't get any better than that. There are still a few fish in the area. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna rest the swim. I've got a mate of mine who's on the upper lake. Um, he's fishing at the moment. I'm gonna go around, spend uh, 10, 15 minutes with him, see how he's getting on. And I'm gonna come back and see if there might be enough uh, opportunity here. And there we go, the nine foot, two and three quarter pound test curve, cross cast EXT rod. And I've paired that up with a whisker 25 QD reel with a 12 pound sensor on that, which is more than ample for what I do um, when I'm doing some free lining. I mean, I could step up to 15 pounds on this lake because it is so weedy, but a 12 pound in sensor is so, so strong. It's never failed me. I've got full confidence in it. And that is my perfect free lining setup. Well, I'm just having a quick walk around the upper lake on the complex, which is Percy's. Unfortunately, no further opportunities over on snails, and I think that's going to be it for, for the day. But I thought while I'm here, just have a quick look around Perth. It's been a little while since I've had a look at it. A little bit less weedy than the snails is. And there's some good fish coming out as well. So maybe this is one to return back to in the future. And the next trip, which is the last trip that I actually went on, where I've been able to get the rods out and do some fishing, it's been quite a busy couple of months for, for us at work. We've been non-stop products because we've got our new products coming out over the next couple of months. And there will be, a, there is a video up on the YouTube channel now where you can have a look at all the new products coming to the Daiwa Cart range over the next few months. So go check that out if you haven't already. There's some exciting new products, some special products in there um, that no doubt you're gonna love. But my last trip, 
was uh, at, at a local reservoir of mine. I went out there to do some filming for work, managed to get the rods out as well, um, and here's how I got on. Well, that's all three rods out on the spot and conditions are absolutely bang on today. It's overcast, got southwesterly wind and the forecast says it's going to be raining on and off throughout the day. It's just started raining as we've got the camera out to speak to you guys. And I'm in a part of the lake which I feel quite confident in. There's a pre-booking system here and unfortunately the swims that I would be heading to at this time of the year are already pre-booked and that's right down to the shallow end but I know on previous experiences, this swim in particular does throw up a few fish and you do have fish tend to stay in this area. At the back end of last year, I did actually do a mini autumn campaign on here, which is also available on the Daiwa Carp YouTube channel. And I did quite well on this swim in particular and the swim just to my right. Um, it was that time of the year where the fish were seeking out that deeper water and this is where that is. So I'm hoping that there will be a few fish in the area today. It might just be couple of weeks too early we're only starting to get our first frost of the morning um, so it, it could go either way really but I am confident I'm quietly confident I've got to get some bait out on the spot and hopefully we'll get a fish at some point through the day Well, first bite on the middle rod, and to me it feels like a typical bream bite. And yet it feels like a bream. Not the start I'm after. Typically I would bring 18 millers with me today, but I haven't actually got any on me, so I'm stuck with a 15 millers. And I think that might be a problem as we go throughout the day. Yep, it's a bream. Not a good start. But as I found on here before, where the bream are, typically, typically the carp aren't too far behind, so. Off you go, fella. Well, let's get it back out and hopefully the carp aren't too far behind. Well, I think I've got enough of bream on the end. It's a bream, bream number three so far. And the wind has picked up as forecast, the rain's starting to come in. I don't know if I mentioned earlier, this is a day ticket venue, so a day's only. So it's a get here at 8 a.m. Then you've got to be packed up and out of the gates at 6.30, which is when they lock. So not much time to play with, but the conditions are cock on for it. They're all nice sized bream. If you come here with a, a feeder rod, I think you'd have a lot of fun all day. You know, that's probably a good four, probably a good four or five pound bream, but not the intended species. Well, it's been non-stop rain for the last four or five hours. We've just had a break in the weather, so I've just put some more bait out. But unfortunately, it's been a non-stop supply of bream so far. I think I'm up to seven or eight bream. Some good bream, bream in amongst them, you know, some four or five pounders, but unfortunately, you know, not what i'm here for today if you had a feeder rod i think you'd have a really good day but the carp can't be too far behind usually where the bream are the carp aren't too far behind on this particular lake um, usually it's a good sign going into the evening but like i say at this time of the year i've got to be off the lake now by i think gates lock at 6 30 so realistically i've got to be packed up by six head back to the van it's quite it's quite a walk back to the van pack up and then get gone before the gates lock 
I'm hopeful, conditions look absolutely cock on for it. I've changed all three rods over to bigger baits to hopefully avoid the bream picking it up. So far, it's, it's worked. I've had them on there for the last hour and so far, so good. But let's see what happens for the rest of the session. I've just had an absolute ripper on the middle rod. I've got down to it, started to reel into it, felt a bit of tension and then bang, all of a sudden it's just, it's gone completely slack. And I've ended up reeling in a hundred yards of of completely slack line, nothing on the end, it's cut me off. Whatever's on the bottom out there, I think with this strong wind coming across and the toe, the, the bow and the line, it's, it's got hooked around a rock or something sharp out there, it's completely snapped me off as soon as it's felt any tension. And what a shame, it was definitely a cart bite, you could tell by the way it was just screaming off, it was taking line as it got down to the rods, it's just typical it. The first decent bite that we have today, it's got caught on some sort of snag out there, but that's why we fish safe rigs. So the fish would get rid of the four ounce lead and at some point it would discharge the hook as well. I'm not going to bother setting up that rod, it's coming up to six o'clock so it is that time where I was expecting to, to be some sort of action just as we're about to pack up and it has, unfortunately we've lost it. But it's time to bring in the other two rods now in the next five minutes and get ourselves back to the van. And note to self next time, make sure to bring the 18 mil boilies to feed off those bream. As mentioned previously, in this instalment of Jack's Vlog, we are also running a giveaway for one lucky winner to win one of our Black Widow low level free rod pods. Excellent bit of kit. And all you have to do to enter is be subscribed to the Diwa Carp YouTube channel, like the video down below, and let us know in the comments what is your favorite thing about carp fishing in the autumn. And we'll pick our favorite comment for the winner of the giveaway. Entrance must be from the UK, and the winner will be announced in the next instalment of Jack's Vlog. Well, as you can probably tell, it's been a bit of a chilly one this morning. I've still got the big coat on. The sun has only just burnt off the morning mist and it's coming up to one o'clock now. It's uh, conditions not really been in my favour this morning. It, like I say, it's been quite cold um, and the wind is going to be changing to a northeasterly any time in the next sort of hour. So I'm going to be make the decision, pack up. If I was staying, I definitely would be going over to Ziggs. The sun's meant to be high in the sky um, and that northeasterly wind is going to be pushing across to that far bank. But uh, I'm going to make a decision to, to pack up. If you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up down below. Give us, drop us a comment. Let us know what you think. And until the next time, guys, I'll catch you later.